Hello everyone, welcome back to Fix the Family. My name is Raylan Alomar and we are bringing you truth without compromise for the family. Welcome back. We are in the middle of our series on Catholic masculinity. In this segment we'll be talking about discipline and within that uh, idea of discipline the topics of self-denial, self-control, a look at our health as well as the virtue of temperance. So let's dive into discipline. Now, discipline is doing the thing that you have to do uh, when you have to do it, uh, even if you don't want to do it. Um, it's a very Catholic concept, and actually the root word of discipline is disciple, which would mean being a follower of Christ, and maybe a more archaic definition would be to, uh, to teach or to train. But the life of a Catholic is a training in self-discipline and as we mature we should uh, rely less on other people instructing us and telling us what to do and be able to decide those, th those things on our own so first of all let's start with self-denial there's a motivator out there you probably know or, or in the past his name was Zig Ziglar and one of the quotes that he made often I re I recall over and over again is very important into the, the way I approach life and it says when you discipline yourself to do the things you need to do when you need to do them <clears throat> the day will come when you can do the things you want to do when you want to do them and that's generally some advice that he gives for use in you know business and financial areas arenas of our lives but I've taken those things these tips and applied them to all the areas of my life be it spirituality with family uh, everything and it, it's borne a lot of fruit but you could look at it even within the church and from the way he was saying that look at how we do things in the Catholic Church we always have Lent before Easter comes Advent comes before Christmas we are to give first before we receive. We are to deny ourselves, then we replenish. We avoid something of lesser value to receive something of greater value. In life, there's always a give and take. And God says, you know, you do your part, I'll do my part. But we will normally have to initiate it first, first giving and then receiving. Let's move on to self-control. And I'll often tell my children... <clears throat> You know, if you don't control yourself, then someone's going to come along and control you. And don't we see that if we look out uh, in society and in the working world? You see those who have a greater amount of self-control will be the ones who are rising up in organizations, who are in positions of leadership, and they're leading and telling other people what to do. And typically those who may not be as advanced or who may be the ones that have to have that hand held or have to have uh, some, some direction from someone um, of more competence than they. Now in our own natural living we need to use self-control. God has given us and blessed us with wonderful natural desires because uh, so in order to protect ourselves and for very good outcomes that we are supposed to experience. Satan on the other hand can create nothing but he takes those goods that God gives us and he twists them and perverts them in order to use for his own um, corrupt deeds and his wicked plans. God is a God of order and peace and cre he created us with these desires for good. Let's look at a few instances of that, a few examples. One might be for eating. I mean, we have that desire to eat in order to nourish and fuel our bodies so that we will have the energy we need to go out and do the things that we have to do to serve God and to serve our neighbor. What is the um, 
the abuse of that, though, is that we typically will tend to eat too much. Why? God makes these desires for a pleasant outcome so that we will gravitate toward them. Hardly see anybody ever missing a meal because it's, it's a pleasurable experience. So if, it may, if God made it a displeasurable experience, then it might be something that we, weren't, that we wouldn't take part of and then we would suffer as a result of it. But people tend to overeat, but then you also have the abuse at the other extreme of, of, of not eating enough of um, you know, anorexia and those, those types of, uh, of problems. So the moderation we should have in there, we need to regulate that and have moderation, is that we should have our three meals a day eating healthy food, um, and not having to have someone standing over us to force us to stop our intake at a certain amount. We, have, we should have this self-control necessary to regulate that. A good way to bring that, to rein that in and to bring that uh, under some discipline is to have a regimen of fasting. You know, and I have found over the years that <clears throat> a good uh, regulation of that or a good practice of that would be to fast for 24 hours, uh, you know, for a day every week. And it just helps to keep command over uh, that impulse to eat just at, at any given time or if there may be a situation we encounter where we have to delay a meal because we, we have something else that gets in the way that we have to do, then it ends up not being nearly the amount of problem it would be if we haven't been in the habit of having some fasting every now and then. So that's, that's a good habit to form. Let's look at another desire. We <clears throat> are built with the natural desire for sexuality. And God gives us that uh, pleasurable experience for the perpetuation of the human race so that within marriage we'll have children and we will rear and raise and form those children within our families. And that is the purpose of that act and why God makes it desirable. Again, Satan will corrupt that and want us to just use it only for pleasure, you know, bringing contraception in and, um, you know, having that pleasure outside of marriage and those situations. And we just, if we want a comparison, we can compare it to electricity. You know, when electricity is running through wires that are well insulated and well covered, electricity can be a powerful thing and can produce, you know, a lot of energy. But whenever those, it's not used properly, if we have wires that are uncovered, or, um, or people come into contact with it, uh, not in the right environments, you can have utter destruction, and that same thing can happen with sexuality. Let's look at another desire we have, that for sleep. You know, we have to get sleep in order to recharge the batteries, you know, let our bodies rest and, and replenish all our cells and get us, keep us in good health. And it's, a, again, a desirable experience. What are the abuses of that. Well, we may sleep too much or we might not get enough sleep. You know, so we may um, stay up too late at night, uh, getting involved with things that, that aren't necessary, get to bed late and then miss out on the amount of sleep that we need or we may just sleep more uh, in the morning beyond when, when we need to get up. So um, again, another behavior that can, we can run into trouble with. Let's move on and talk, start talking about health. Okay, within, um, within our health, you know, we need to practice discipline there as well. And Catholics, the way our viewpoint should be, we should have a high regard for our bodies. It's the only place we have to live, uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we need to take care of it. Part of taking care of our bodies is going to be some form of exercise. And as we get older in age, we tend to have more sedentary lifestyles and maybe not do as much activity so you know and then we start to have health problems as a result so we should keep ourselves in good condition in good shape so that means to have some type of physical activity the point here is to practice some exert some exertion and to renounce comfort again good catholic concepts so what particular one are we going to do I often recommend people to do the thing that they enjoy doing because then they're more apt and more likely to do it and more apt to keep it going. 
you know, but if we look at various activities that might give us some good results. They say that um, probably swimming is the ultimate, the, the most beneficial because it allows us to work all the muscle groups as well as the cardiovascular system with very low impact on, on the joints. Um, so it ends up doing a lot of good uh, with just one activity. Now all these activities are going to have their downside that we need to be aware of and then see how well they work for us. You know, for swimming, not a lot of people <clears throat> will automatically have access to the facilities necessary to swim. Uh, they may um, even encounter issues with that in the winter because you have to go to an indoor facility. And so that often will, will involve, you know, going to some type of public place or to a, a membership um, type of club. And then, uh, then you'll have a, you know a mixture of people you know in, in the state of uh, undress required to um, to swim, and so that could be a cause of temptation or on the occasion of sin. But again, if you can handle that, and if that's what you prefer to do, uh, that was definitely a good activity. <clears throat> and other, you know, like I prefer running, you know, and if someone you know wanted me to walk for my my exercise, that would be a chore for me. And so, but, you know, but with one of the downsides of running is that you know, they say that the impact um, causes problems and, and things that, and, and a lot of people just find it's too much exertion. Really what we were made to do as humans is to walk. We walk. That's, that's what God created us to do. So that's going to be the, the exercise of choice for the majority of people. And what we have to do there is just get into a regimen of, uh, you know, 30 minutes at a time, three times a week of getting that heart rate up, getting the, getting the muscles moving and the, the legs and the joints and getting everything going. Um, you know, and the problem with that, a couple of things to keep in mind with that is that uh, if when you get started, um, do it in moderation, start out slow, don't expect to, to work up to those full levels right away. You know, you might not be able to do 30 minutes at a time, you know, right away. Work up to it, you know, and, and give your body the opportunity to adjust the burden that you're placing on it and you know the problem that a lot of people run into is that they wait until they're they're having trouble before they do this you know doctors you know when somebody goes in and has had heart issues they will um, they'll start exercising at that point so let's do it before we run into trouble let's be proactive about it and realize that we have to do that and it's a very good discipline Finally, let's, dis let's discuss temperance, which is the opposite virtue of gluttony, but temperance can be applied to get all areas of our life. The Catechism gives us a good definition, working definition of temperance, and I want to consider some very key words within this statement in paragraph 1809. It says, temperance is the moral virtue that moderates <clears throat> the attraction of pleasures, and provides balance in the use of created goods. It ensures the will's mastery over instincts and keeps desires within the limits of what is honorable. You see the dignity there? You know, so let's consider this definition. It moderates <clears throat> um, the attraction of pleasures, providing balance to goods. So God gives, again, God gives us those good things and we just need to moderate the amount that we need and again to to what is honorable balance we have a lot of bases to cover have a lot of different things so it helps to keep us in balance if we moderate these things if we start spending too much time um, being excessive in one area then other areas are going to suffer and then mastery mastery isn't just doing something but getting it to a level of perfection. And we're never going to get everything completely perfect, but what we can do is to um, keep reaching for improvement and working to get, it, get better at things. We can't expect that perfection right away, and whenever it involves sin, we just need to have the humility to get to confession and to, uh, to humble ourselves, make, make a confession, and be forgiven and, and receive absolution. But with doing things, you know, we, that might not involve sin, we need to realize that anybody that has become successful with anything 
has, um, has had to overcome failure, overcome difficulty and obstacles. So we, we need to be willing to fail in, in order to learn things and how to master them. So discipline, a very good and important characteristic for men to possess and to develop uh, for Catholic manhood. Thank you for coming uh, and, in, and participating in this uh, segment of Catholic Masculinity here at Fix the Family. Next time we'll be talking about faith. Come back and see us. My name is Raylan Alamon. God bless you.